Lesson 20.2, Task 3, Identify Treatment and Control Groups in Experiments. When conducting statistical research by experiment, researchers try to determine a cause and effect relationship between a treatment and a characteristic of interest. An effective way to do this is by using a randomized comparative experiment. Randomized comparative experiments. A randomized comparative experiment randomly assigns subjects to one of two groups, the treatment group, which is given the treatment, and the control group, which is not. Example, to see whether zinc has an effect on the duration of a cold, researchers randomly assign subjects with colds to one of the following groups and records the duration of the colds. All right, the treatment group. These subjects take zinc tablets, and the control group, these subjects take tablets without zinc, usually called like a placebo. All right, to see whether regular moderate exercise has an effect on blood pressure, researchers have half of the subjects set aside 30 minutes daily for walking, and the other half not do any walking beyond their normal daily routines. The subjects also take and record their blood pressure at the same time each day. Identify the treatment, the characteristic of interest, the treatment group, and the control group for this experiment. All right, so the first question, the treatment is having subjects walk 30 minutes daily. The characteristic of interest is the blood pressure. The treatment group consists of subjects who walk 30 minutes a day. And the control group are the ones that don't make any changes to their normal routine. All right, so what benefit does the control group provide? Why does just, why not just run the experiment with the treatment group and see if daily exercise improves the group, the group's blood pressure? All right, so using a control group in addition to the treatment group allows researchers to compare two groups whose only difference is the treatment. Researchers can feel confident that any difference in outcomes between the groups is due to the treatment and not some other variable. All right, why would it be important for the researchers to randomly assign the subjects of the treatment and control groups instead of allowing subjects to pick their group? All right, healthy subjects may be more likely to join the treatment group or the group with moderate exercise, which could produce misleading results. So by randomly choosing the groups, you'd, it's an equal chance of being in the group with exercise and the group with no changes. All right, that's all for task three. If you have any questions, let me know. Lesson 20.2, task four. Evaluate a media report of statistical research. When you encounter media reports of statistical research, you should judge any reported conclusions based on how the research was conducted. Ask yourself these questions. Is the research a survey, an observational study, or an experiment? A survey simply measures variables, an observational study looks for an association between variables, and an experiment tries to establish a cause and effect relationship between variables. Was randomization used in controlling the research? Random sampling is the best way to obtain a representative sample from a population and draw accurate conclusions. Does the report include the details of the research, such as sample size, statistics, and margin of error? These help you judge how much confidence you have in the results. Evaluate each article below by answering these questions. Is this survey an observational study or... Is this a survey, an observational study, or an experiment? How do you know? Was randomization used in the research? If so, how? What details of the research are included? Is any important information missing? All right, so the first one says, study finds technology widely used by US, US college students. A study reported that 89% of college students regularly use laptop computers, 86% regularly use a smartphone, and 51% regularly use a tablet. These percentages are based on the results of an online questionnaire completed by 1,211 college students. 
responses were weighed to be representative of the U.S. college population in terms of age, gender, household income, and other characteristics. All right, so that's the given information. So let's talk about um, what kind of report this is. All right, so it says, what clues in the article help you identify what type of research the study is? All right, so it did mention a questionnaire, which suggests that the study is a survey. All right, so if we go back up here and look, it does say an online questionnaire was completed by this many students. All right, so a survey, also the study does not appear to relate students' technology use to other to any other variable as an observational study or an experiment would. All right, so we can safely say that one would be an experiment. All right, so the study is, is a survey because it simply measured what percent of college students use different types of technology. The survey sample was not random because it was a voluntary response survey. However, an attempt was made to make the sample be representative of the population of U.S. college students by weighing responses to match characteristics of the population. The article includes the sample size and the estimated percents of college students who regularly use laptop computers, smartphones, and tablets. One key piece of information missing from the article is how researchers define regular use of technology. All right, here's another one. Fitness in teen years may guard against heart trouble later. All right, so this one says a study of almost 750,000 Swedish men suggest people who are aerobically fit as teenagers are less likely to have a heart attack later in life. Each 15% increase in the level of aerobic fitness as a teenager is associated with an 18% reduced risk of heart attack 30 years later. Researchers analyzed medical data from men drafted into the nation's army, which requires a test of aerobic fitness at the time of induction. National health registers provide information on heart attacks the men had later in life. So this one says, how can you tell whether the study was an observational study or an experiment? All right, so it says the study involves two variables that are observed and manipulated by research. The study involves two variables that are observed but not manipulated, so an observational study. So they did observe um, whether the aerobic fitness level as teenagers um, affected their heart attack rate later in life. So that was observed through medical records. Um, the study involves one variable that is observed by researchers and the study involves one variable that is manipulated. So nothing was manipulated. Um, this one says the study involves two variables, aerobic fitness as a teenager or young adult and the risk of heart attack later in life. All right, both of those were observed, so it is an observational study, not an experiment. All right, so the study of an observational study, because the factor of aerobic fitness as a teenager is related to the characteristic of interest, which is having a heart attack later in life. The level of aerobic fitness was simply observed, not manipulated, as in an experiment. Randomization was not used in the research because all of the subjects were male draftees in the Swedish Army. And subjects may not be representative of all adults because women were excluded. And they may not be representative of all adult males because only Swedish males were studied. The report includes the sample size and the amount by which heart attack risk was reduced for a given increase in level of aerobic fitness as teenagers. The missing information includes how the researchers defined level of aerobic fitness and how they calculated the percent reduction in heart attack risk. So as you can see um, when you're looking at surveys and um, 
observational studies and things, you've got to be very careful with the wording just to kind of make sure that it um, is a clear uh, indication of what you're trying to measure. All right, that's all for task four. If you have any questions, let me know.